He just got his permit today. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> Watch out, Wendell. <laughs> Okay, well, it is seven, and uh, I think everybody pretty much knows each other. Uh, our visitors can probably see our names on their screen, I guess, so we don't really need introductions. Um, and Nancy, I think you're first up. Take it away. Well, I would really like to introduce uh, Noor, who um, works with LifePath, and he's uh, tasked with getting together this program, um, age-friendly, dementia-friendly communities that I've spoken to the select board before. And I don't remember if Lori, if you were on the board at that point, I know you were not, Gilly. Um, Dan, you may remember in relation to village neighbors. And yeah. that's my interest. Nor is taking this way beyond that. And I wanted you to hear about the bigger work that he's doing. And um, you know he's looking for uh, support from each of the towns. He's going to he's going around to speak to different select boards. Okay, Nor, take it away. Thank you. So I'll just share my. Am I, can I share my screen on this meeting? Is that possible? Yeah. Let me. Uh, I think I just have to um, click something. Thank you. <laughs> and now it should work. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, very exciting to meet all of you and uh, to introduce this project. This is, um, as Nancy said, a regional effort that LifePath is attempting to uh, implement in our region. I believe you can see the screen now. Yep. Y yes, Wonderful. we can. Wonderful. So I just wanted to take a few minutes to give you an introduction, talk a little bit about what, give you some information about what is the age-friendly communities movement um, why it matters now, what is the context behind it, and also about next steps, what, we're, what we've been doing since we launched and that was recent and where we're going from here. Okay, take it away. So our world in the past century or so has seen a dramatic changes in, in, in our demographic makeup due to unprecedented, unprecedented trends in modern medicine, in public health, a decrease in fertility rate, uh, the, the population is much older than it used to be um, because of all these reasons. And that brings both opportunities and, and challenges. An older population is one that has gained a lot of momentum and experience um, and is able to contribute to the success of its community. And at the same time, the needs of an older population um, look very different to the needs of a younger population. Um, and our infrastructure, our public policies have not necessarily kept up with this change in these change in demographics. And one of the stats that I've come across that are so important is that by 2034, um, one out of every three folks in the US is going to be, or for the first time in the US, we're gonna have more people over the age of 65 than 18 or under for the first time in the country's history. And that shift is actually gonna happen sooner in Massachusetts and has already happened in Franklin County, where 22% of the population is over 65 and only 18% is 18 or under. So in the midst of all these needs, the World Health Organization, um, is, since the beginning of this um, uh, millennia, millennium really, has started to look into ways to make the world better for this population and came up with this age-friendly communities program, which is uh, in the US is administered through AARP and is a program that targets long-term policy and systems level change. Um, and it usually takes three to five years over four phases. The program starts with enrollment, which is we declare intention of being an age-friendly community. We send an application to AARP. Once we're enrolled, we do a needs assessment uh, for our communities, for the needs of older folks. And then we move to an action planning phase and then to an implementation phase. Um, and after that, after the implementation, really the phase not represented is uh, we're supposed to look, review our work and always try to improve it and improve conditions uh, for older folks. And so ARP and the World Health Organization have identified um, these eight domains of livability that towns can use as a framework to uh, go through this process. And they divided them into social environment ones and built environments, environment ones. And so the physical environment ones include outdoor spaces and buildings, transportation, housing, and the social environment domains include 
social inclusion, civic participation and employment, communication and information, community and health services, as well as social participation. And what's interesting about this model is that this ARP really encourages towns to use whichever domains work for us. Um, you could use all of these uh, domains. You could focus on only a few of them. You could merge them. You could even create one if that works better for the needs of your community. We are also going to be integrating dementia-friendly work in this project. And dementia-friendly communities is actually a different initiative that started by a different organization um, and works to make communities better, more informed, safer for people living with dementia and their caregivers. But Dementia Friendly America, the uh, organization running this, has partnered with AARP to help towns do both of this at the same time so they don't have to double their work since dementia friendly and age friendly work are related in many ways. So we are going to be integrating dementia friendly work from the beginning in our project. Um, and just an idea about uh, uh, the age friendly communities across uh, uh, around us, across the nation, there's almost 500 communities now that have been have got the designation of being age friendly, including six states. Massachusetts was the second state uh, to join as a state. And within the Commonwealth, we have um, about 70 communities that have received the age friendly designation. Unfortunately, in our area so far, only Deerfield has gotten the um, uh, the designation in May 2019, and very recently, um, Sunderland uh, is also uh, uh, on the verge um, of receiving that. Um, and this is part of why this project came here, because uh, we wanted to also bring it into uh, Franklin County and the North Quabbin area. So these towns, these communities that have implemented this project, there's many examples of things that they've achieved, projects they've worked on, um, I just wanted to highlight a couple of examples. For example, Age Friendly Berkshires, which is also another project that worked on it as a region and not an individual community. Um, they, they've done many, thing, many things that came out of that needs assessment that they've heard from folks, including uh, renovating one of the senior centers to have outdoor equipment year round. Uh, they heard from people that they wanted more employment opportunities for older folks, so they did job fair for companies and people over 50. Uh, Age Friendly Brookline, which is was the first community in the in Massachusetts to enroll, um, they've established a home sharing advisory service to help older adults who want to downsize or still remain at home, aging place, but with some help, match them with the right people. They have also trained and certified over a hundred businesses as age friendly and dementia friendly businesses. This includes safety features, this includes discounts and special programs uh, for older adults. <coughs> so this project, we received this grant from the uh, Healthy Aging Fund, which is from the uh, Department of Public Health. Um, and LifePath received this grant to be the backbone organization, but really this project, this model, is supposed to be a community-led effort. And so LifePath is here to convene, to coordinate, this work, but we wanna work with all of our communities to have an important say in what happens. And so there's different roles. There's a steering committee um, that would oversee the overall direction and coordination of our project. We will have work groups that will be specific, specific to domains to work on conducting needs assessments and creating action plans. we we'll also have an advisory council of made up of elders to do more outreach in the community and also the role of select boards, who we need your select board to issue an official letter requesting entry into the ARP uh, uh, network in order to get that age-friendly designation. And they did this on purpose because they, they thought it was really important for an effort like, uh, effort like this to have the blessing of the high of the elected leaders of the community. That's why they made this letter a big part and a condition of joining the, the network. And this is the minimum participation of select boards, but there also can be select board members who want to join some of these groups. We also will be coordinating with select boards when we're doing, for example, training programs to offer some to uh, town hall employees, to first responders, to uh, different people through the town. And so, like I said, we launched at the end of 2020 we have been doing a lot of community engagement and outreach. We've talked to different local officials, nonprofits, councils on aging, uh, village neighbors, 
uh, healthcare people, interfaith community, mental health, um, and also some interested residents that don't necessarily represent the organization. We've also promoted the project through some written materials, and we've recruited the steering committee made up of 14 members uh, that come from different parts of the region, different towns, and also uh, represent different fields. And we've met a couple of times um, the steering committee, and uh, now in our current phase, we are presenting to select boards like I'm doing now to request commitment letters, which we have about four towns now have agreed to join. And at the same time, we'll be, we'll be providing age and dementia friendly training programs to the community. Um, and we have three planned right now, one through the North Wabin uh, Community Coalition, one through uh, Greenfield Communi uh, Community College, and one through the Medical Reserve Corps. And we'll be offering more and more training opportunities. And then at the end of this um, period, we'll be applying for ARP designation as a region um, uh, so that we can move to start planning our needs assessment um, after that. So that's uh, just a brief idea about the project and why it's it, it's important right now. Um, and I'd love to answer any questions, but before that, I also um, would love to ask Nancy to uh, to say briefly why, as uh, uh, the representative of the COA, this uh, project is so important and why, you, Nancy, you wanted it to be adopted in Wendell. Yeah. Um, well, I, I'm welcoming the energy that Noor is bringing in because this is not something to try to get going myself. In the last couple of years, I've been doing some dementia-friendly workshops with people through Village Neighbors. Um, so there's a few people in the four towns that have had this training, and there's been some events that have happened in Greenfield. Um, but it's something that we do need to look at going forward. Wendell is already over 33%, uh, over 60. So, uh, and so is uh, Shootsbury, so is New Salem. Uh, Leverett even more so. Leverett is one of the oldest towns around in, in all of Western Mass, the oldest uh, average age. So um, it's something we need to look forward to. Um, I think there's some ideas uh, that I have and other, other folks can think about too that uh, will make the town center, uh, enhance the town center, things that we're tying together with um, the meeting house of having some uh, collaboration with them as well as they start to open up and have some programs. So there's some bigger space that will bring in some people from other towns as well. Um, village neighbors will throw some events, for example, that will bring in people from Shootsbury and Leverett as well at times. And um, also uh, uh, some multi-generational uh, things happening there. Um, and we're putting in this spring where the Council on Aging is putting in a little outdoor patio in front of our uh, space so that we can maybe start having some of our coffee socials again and stuff, even with some social distancing, even outside as it gets um, a little bit warmer. Um, we've got a little easy up and, you know, we might be able to just do some things outside that we haven't done before. Um, so those are some of our little moves uh, right now. But uh, in the longer run, I think uh, our town center is really a place that can be developed with the town kitchen that we have with the meeting house, with the little senior center, um, that that can be a place that as people age, there can be more things going on right in town for folks and even transportation, getting them here, even if it's volunteer transportation, getting them to the center if they no longer drive. There's already a lot of people that aren't driving. Um, so. Right. Uh, okay, good. Well, great. Thank you both very much. And uh, it sounds like a great project. And uh, I think we can probably sign up for it. Um, board members, how do you think? I agree. I agree too. That's yeah, just, so um, from being somebody who's caring for, you know, parents or aging. Yes. It's yes. A, a real need. Yep. Gilly's in, in the thick of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I'm getting a little age friendly myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can probably appreciate it. 
Yeah, there's a lot to come. Yeah, well, thank you both. And okay. uh, Nor, do you have a, a a form letter that we could use that Nancy could use to get us to sign? Absolutely. Uh, I have a, a form letter that we've prepared and you all have to do is put in the town's name um, and then your signature at the bottom. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. I, uh, I, there, are there any questions? There's so much about this project that it's hard to fit it into a 10, 12 minute presentations, but I try, I try to fit as much as I can. But if you have any questions now or later, I'll also leave my contact information with Nancy and I'm happy to uh, go, get on the phone and answer any questions at any moment. Great, I think we're good. Any questions? I'll just ask one quick one, just to clarify. So it sounds like you want this to be a regional effort. So that means Wendell would not be on its own, like we wouldn't be making our own steering committee and all those things. So is there a minimum number of towns that you need to sign up? You know, are you trying to get all of Franklin County to sign up? Is that the goal? That's a great question, yes. Yeah. So we are hoping to work with all 30 towns in the Franklin County, North Quabbin area, but we're not gonna limit ourselves to wait for all 30 towns to sign up and then go. We are going to try to get a good number of the towns, at maybe um, a third or so, uh, and apply for the designation, start the work, and then bring more towns into the fold as they are ready so that that momentum can help more towns join. Because if we wait until all 30 towns the first one we talked to is gonna lose a lot of that energy, I think. So we're gonna try and, and, and apply with a, a, good, a good chunk of town that represents also geographically different parts of the region so that we are regional. Um, and then, like I said, bring in more towns. Great, thank you. And, and I think if, if we're joined into this effort, um, we won't have to figure out these things ourselves as a little town. We're going to be part of some bigger grants and money, and there's a lot of interest in the state in uh, keeping things age-friendly, dementia-friendly in the communities um, because it actually saves money to help people stay in their homes and in their communities. People, That's what people want, and they're hearing that. Absolutely. And that's why we have this approach. There's towns that are one town going at it alone. There's some groups of towns that are three, four towns working together. And we wanted this hybrid approach where we get that benefit from working all together as a region, but we're also gonna keep implementation opportunities open to the local level. When one thing, something just makes sense to implement in Wendell and not everything else, then that's open. But when, for example, transportation is one thing that small rural towns have a hard time addressing as one town. And when you get a group of four or five towns, they can get together and uh, provide some real solutions that otherwise they wouldn't be able to do alone. Get us a van. <laughs> like something like that, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thank you okay. all for your time. Very good, thank you both very much for yeah, coming. Thanks for coming. Great meeting you. Enjoy the rest of your meeting. Thanks. Thanks. So Nancy, I see Woodbank next, but uh, I guess Cliff isn't here yet, so. Yeah, that's 7.30. Okay. Installation of VOIP. So um, our our alarm systems in all three buildings have been switched over off of the copper lines onto the internet lines. So the next step is to get um, Whip City Fiber back out to, to install the VoIP uh, everywhere. We have that in the town offices through Crocker right now. Um, and I don't know how difficult it's gonna to be to make that switch in the office. Um, my concern is we're currently paying Crocker $670 a month and we're down to just using them basically for our phone line. So I'd really like to get, um, get us moved off of that as quickly as we can, hopefully by the end of this month so we don't have to pay for March as well. Okay. I don't, I don't know how to go about doing that. Uh, you just need to talk to Whip City Fiber, or we need to have someone do that? Maybe I can talk to Alistair. I think he helped last time with the... Um, I think that's a good start. Uh, I can't... Did we ever... Did you ever ask Robert about this? I'm not sure if he's... How much he's familiar with the, that kind of um, end of it. He did help them, um, I think, make the switch over to, to the high-speed internet. And I think he also helped the alarm people. They had a couple of questions. 
um, and you know he may be able to help them. Um, but but I I mean I'm I can make the call, but I certainly am not going to be able to help them with the installation stuff. <laughs> Yeah, Nancy, I'm not quite clear. You said the uh, alarm system has been switched to VOIP, but VOIP isn't working. No, it, it doesn't go over, that's voice over internet. It actually just works off of internet, sort of. Um, right. But but not. The voice not over like is the like phone. a phone, is the phone system. Yeah, it's, it's now it just phone. works through the internet system. Right. <laughs> well, I'm just not quite clear on what, is the remaining thing left to be done? So in the highway garage and in the library, they have to get the new UMA phones and those have to be hooked up. Oh. Um, here we have these VoIP friendly phones, but I don't know if we'll be able to continue to use these. These are the multi-line ones. I, I don't know how this works. Um, and the other thing is if it's gonna take a while to figure it out, I could perhaps talk to Crocker and we could greatly reduce the, the broadband width that we need because um, yeah. we no longer need it for internet. We're just needing it for phone. Maybe we can get it down to a reasonable number um, and then have some time to think about what we're doing. Yeah, that sounds like good uh, a good plan. And I think, I think the best thing is probably to talk to Alistair and maybe Robbie first and get an okay. idea. Do you, do you want me to do that or do you want to do it? No, I, I can reach out to them. Yeah, I think Alistair is, is the first step. Okay. And just let us know if you need a high price consultant. Maybe we do. Oh, okay. Um, the DLTA form, Stanley asked if we could hold off until he joined. So that could be in, after the Wood Bank. Um, so we can jump to animal control. I think I had sent you the job description that Megan Gallo had sent along. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I was hoping if everybody was happy with that, that you could vote to adopt that. Um, and I can forward it to Carolyn. It looked good to me. Um, other board members? Yeah, it looked, I, I it was, looked at it when you first sent it. Very complete, I thought. Yeah. I'm afraid I forgot, but I think I can trust you all. <laughs> I, I appreciate her taking the initiative to uh, yeah. work on that. So I move we vote to approve that. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I will send that along. Okay, so. The next one you'll have to bear with me. I, I'm trying to explain it. It's a little complex and I'll try to make it simple. Um, our, our aggregation consultant, Colonial Power, is working on a new program um, through the state's um, SMART, the Solar Mass Renewables Target Program, to create projects um, to work with the town's municipal aggregation program and it will give low income customers a two cent discount on their kilowatt prices. Um, so it requires two things from the select board. The first one is an administrative service agreement with Colonial and they'll take care of all the details behind the scene. They'll work with the suppliers. They'll take care of the paperwork. They'll file reports with the DOER and the DPU. The second thing is they will go out and locate companies that will build solar installations and what they need are sort of these off takers and in this case it will be low income customers through towns that are aggregating electricity. Um, but in order to get those the select board will need to sign a 20 year agreement saying that they're willing to um, allow this to, to run through the aggregation program although the town will actually be doing nothing. Colonial will be doing all of the work. And I can try to answer questions. And if you're still confused, we can get Colonial. They said that they would come to the meetings and, and try to explain it in greater detail. But this is for new solar. This isn't going to operate off of any existing solar. So it's expanding the solar base and giving low income customers a, a discount on their, um, their bills. Well, I think you explained it really well, Nancy. Um, 
it doesn't mean that the solar installations would be in Wendell, I imagine. No, they probably won't be. Right. But in Massachusetts. Yeah, and do you have any uh, thoughts about it, pro or con? Uh, it seems like, you know, a win-win a for the low-income people and for the town not having to do anything. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, there was a number of towns on it uh, with a lot of people that knew a lot about solar, and they seemed, um, you know, pretty impressed with the program. Um, it doesn't commit us to anything. It commits us to continue to allow these solar generators to pass this through our aggregation system. Uh, without it, they won't get um, funding, apparently. They have to have somebody there. They're creating electricity, and they need somebody to guarantee that they're going to use it for the next 20 years. So this is us saying, yes, our low-income customers in, in Wendell will continue to use this aggregation program to get this discount for the next 20 years. Do we know that people in Wendell are using that program? Uh, yeah, and I can get you an exact number. I know in New Salem it was like, you know, 38 people were, uh -huh. were uh, um, and, and they won't really have to do anything that Colonial will work with them and it will be an automatic pass through of the, of the uh, discount. And, and I don't know how difficult it is to apply to um, National Grid to get on this low income or what their parameters are, but I believe I think it's called the R1, R2 discount. They're, they're in a particular group. R2 accounts, uh, low-income accounts, um, they're already getting, I believe, a third off their electric bills. It would certainly behoove anybody that might be able to qualify um, to get on board with that. I mean, that's a, a really great deal, and this will just give them an extra two cents a kilowatt off of that. Yeah. I think it might be tied, I'm trying to remember, but I think it, it might be tied into if they receive benefits from uh, Department of Transitional Assistance or if they receive other supports that they might qualify for that as well. So it, like if that's a qualification factor. Um, yeah. But I wonder how many people know about it. I'm just. It's similar to fuel or it is the fuel assistance program, I would imagine. I know Nancy Grattan is really good about informing people at Good Neighbors about all these programs. Good. So um, yeah, I bet. And you know, if I would say if there's, a, there's always an opportunity for us to do outreach if we if we wanted to yeah. in mm -hmm. a newsletter or something. Right. Well, in terms of this particular um, two cent discount, we wouldn't have to do anything that they would take care of all the notification. And just to be clear, we would sign this um, administrative MOU with Colonial to allow them to move forward. And then eventually we'd sign MOUs with specific solar developments. But until the solar project comes online, there'll be no discount. This could be, you know, six months, a year, 18 months down the road before people actually start to see the discount, but we have to get all the paperwork in place first. Well, I just, I guess I'm just um, a tiny bit leery, not, I mean, not really, but I guess it would be nice to hear from them in terms of if, what, if they have any criteria about what kind of solar developments they're going to be working with, because there is, you know, there has been a bit of controversy about, you know, clear cutting for solar and which is happening a fair amount or has been anyway in Western Massachusetts. Um, okay. So that would be one of my concerns, you know, just something to, to clarify. Um, Okay, I can ask Mark to come in uh, at the next meeting. He's better at explaining anyway. And uh, I was just also going to uh, recommend that um, we have the energy committee come, where I can we can bring it up at an energy committee meeting, if depending on the timing of it, um, to have them okay. weigh in. I think that's okay. Good Sounds good. Oh. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll put it off for two weeks, and we'll have him come in, and we'll invite the energy committee at that point. Awesome. Good. Thank you. And is 
Maybe that Cliff coming on. I think that's Cliff coming on. Cliff, are you there? I see. Yes, him. I am here. Hello, I'm here. He's in the dark. Good. I am. Give me a second. I'm. Uh, I. Uh, <laughs> we just were at a friends for dinner out in in Vermont. Where and I'm like in their parking lot area because um, it was hard to get kids packed up in time to get home, and I I failed at getting them in. So I'm here for the moment. Okay. Well. Um, you're on at 7.30 and awesome. welcome to our meeting and uh, take it away. All right, excellent. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm gonna see if I can find a little light so maybe you can see me, maybe not. Um, I guess I'm just in the dark. Um, so basically I, I'm wanting to propose the idea of starting a wood bank for the town of Wendell. Um, I've been in communication with a few different towns to kind of get an idea for some logistics and uh, kind of considerations that we'd have to address. Um, and I'm basically at this point, just wanted to check in with the town to see uh, thoughts and feelings and, and to check in with everyone uh, on this council now to see if that feels like a viable thing to kind of pursue and to kind of come up with more logistical um, assessments moving forward. But wanted to first really check in with you folks first to see if that feels like something that the town can do and and uh, how we want to go about doing it. Well, t tell us exactly what a wood bank is and what the town would need to do and what you would be doing. Fantastic. All right. So a wood bank is basically a, a collective or it's usually volunteer based where um, I, I just completed a tree assessment with Dave Hawkins a few weeks ago, a few months ago now, I guess. And so we came up with a list of probably close to 80 trees or so that need to be removed. And so the electrical company is going to be responsible for nearly half of those trees. Um, and they are willing to, um, you know, drop the trees or, you know, collect them and bring them to a one spot. And so in the past, what they usually do is just drop the trees on the side of the road and, um, you know, a few people from town end up kind of taking them. And, um, you know, we'll either resell that wood or just use it for themselves. And I want to propose basically creating a space to where that wood is brought to a specific location, either, you know, by the, the highway department truck area, or there's, you know, an area below where the dump is, where there's very wood chips that are kind of uh, left behind, I guess, by the, the different departments. Right. And so creating a space where uh, what's been done in the other towns is it's volunteer based where, um, the community basically will come together at certain days and either have professionals cut up the wood um, and then we can, you know, people who are needed in town, basically, there's a lot of different ways that they do it, that you can either do like a one-time uh, offering per household. Um, and, you know, so we have to come up with logistics and figure out, you know, how much each family would get. But, you know, I think there would probably be an application involved with that so that families that are in need of wood who are having a hard time affording it have access to it. Um, a lot of places will split the wood, um, but then we run into the issue of liability. Um, and so that's something that the town would have to figure out the best way of doing it. You know, uh, some places just do a waiver um, and that kind of negates a certain level of liability and also taking away certain things like, you know, uh, just a town person of some sort, or person from town rather, using a chainsaw where there's a lot higher liability. Um, so, you know, with the budget I have, I could allocate potentially getting a wood splitter. And I'm just trying to figure out ways that we can, you know, if, if there's nearly 100 trees that are being taken down, um, you know, to be able to use that to make sure that it's equitable and, and shared evenly throughout the town instead of just a few people who kind of make it their main heat source to make sure that everyone has a fair share of what is the communities in the first place. Yeah, okay. Well, it, it sounds like a good idea and uh, that there's quite a few details that need to be worked out like the location or site and so forth. And maybe the next step would be for you to talk to the highway department and the rats people and find out if uh, they're interested in providing a site um, that's one thing that we would need to know in advance. The liability issue is a big concern, so we'd need to figure out a way around that. And any thoughts from the board? 
Any other thoughts? I, I just know I've heard of some towns that are that have wood banks and I've seen some advertisements that they're having trouble getting rid of the wood. So I don't know if that would be an issue here or not. Mm. Um, and I don't know if that's people just not having, you know, the, the ability to cut, split, move the wood to a location where they need to take it. Um, and I think my other concern is just the liability managing it. All that's huge. Yeah, the management is a big job, Cliff, definitely. To determine who, who gets it, who gets how much. <laughs> and, who do, and who does the work of processing the wood. Right. Right. So, I mean, like I said, in the past, what, what's happened is it's been a community driven. And I feel like our community is kind of a trendsetter for how strong, you know, our town comes together in terms of getting things done. You know, a good example is Friends of Wendell, where, you know, no town comes close to doing anything close to what we do. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, I have a strong belief that we'll have a lot of town support. And I also know that, you know, I feel like a lot of people are living below the poverty level in town. And so yeah. I, I think that getting rid of the wood won't be an issue. My, my greatest concern is liability and and uh, I feel like that's something the town has to kind of figure out what is the best uh, way of, of settling that or making that work. Uh, I talked to, oh man, now I'm spacing on his name, uh, Matt, Matt Edwards. And he's, um, you know, because I've been in communication with him about removing a lot of the trees that, you know, the electrical company won't be able to take care of or is not in their jurisdiction to take care of. And he's willing to also bring you know, deliver wood to whatever location we want and to also bring chips there. Um, so, yeah, I think that that's probably a bigger question or, you know, a logistical assessment that the town has to be a, uh, a part of. And I think, you know, probably the most wise way of doing it would be hiring the highway department that's already insured by the town to do, I guess, like the, the bucking up of wood. Um, and so that could come out of you know, the tree warren budget, or that could be something on the side, you know, that's some, there's a lot of things that has to be decided down the line, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and I'm just not really sure where to start with that in terms of, you know, things that feel like it's the prerogative of the town to even allow that to happen. And, you know, sure we get permission from the highway department, but then I just, I, I, I feel like I'm shooting in the dark a little bit in terms of you know what our community will allow in terms of I think what you folks are in charge of deciding and so um, I don't want to get too involved in it if, if it's going to get shot down from the get-go so I think that this just feels like a, a clearing space right now for me to know if if that you know if this is ideas even um, wants to be you know uh, thought about by our town well, uh, for, I for one think it's a good idea and it's definitely uh, worth thinking about. But like I said before, there's a lot of details that would need to be worked out. And um, I, we can talk to the highway department and see how they feel about providing a space and how they would feel about cutting it up. Um, it's a strained highway budget to begin with. So uh, we, it, that's a consideration, but we could speak to them yeah, but I think all I can say at the moment is it's a great idea, but it needs a lot of thinking. Yes, it really does. I think there's a lot of logistical aspects. And thankfully, town of Peter Sam, Montague, Turner's, and another Amherst. town or two in there, Amherst, thank you, um, are, have all done wood banks. And so, you know, there's like, um, I think that there's a lot of community support to help get us off the ground in terms of logistics and figuring things out. Um, okay, yeah, well, that's good. Uh, who's doing the cutting and the bucking up in those t other towns? Um, I think the town, uh, like the highway department, DPW is doing a lot of it. Okay. Um, I think the tree warren of a few different towns are doing it because they're insured under their own businesses because that's kind of what they, you know, they're arborists and so they're already yeah. covered. Um, you know, like, I'm trying to think. I think that, you know, companies that are doing arbor work or tree work already who are relatively expensive per day 
uh, you know, we could find a, a less experienced but insured business that, you know, would charge a lot less because they're not climbing trees and doing all, you know, using buckets and stuff. So I think that we run the chance of being able to get a majority of the wood cut up even by professionals for a relatively inexpensive you know, fund, especially if we can get a donation base going by the community to support this. Um, you know, there's a lot of what ifs. It just feels, it feels a little bit, not pie in the sky per se, but like uh, it's very, very loose right now because there's nothing really grounding it in. And, and I recognize that. And I, I guess I'm not really sure where to start. I, I guess, you know, finding a location for the wood to go is a great place. Um, and I think that me figuring that out sooner than later is best just because um, I know that the electrical company is going to want to start removing some of these trees that are posing a risk to their lines. Um, yeah. So, I mean, even if, if the wood bank uh, falls flat, we'll, we'll have a lot of excess wood to, you know, I don't know if there's community buildings that are burning wood or whatever. I doubt it. I don't know. Um, Lori, did you, do you have some experience or knowledge about some of the area wood banks? Not really. I took a quick look because Cliff mentioned it in an email. Um, but uh, did you, you mentioned Cliff that some that, that wa waivers might be used in some towns? Is that yes. true? So yeah. there are people. There are towns. Do you know which town? Um, well, when I was looking on like the different websites and and the. Uh, I think the majority of communities, even in Maine, New England, pretty much like when I was looking at all the different websites and stuff associated with wood banks, they all are, you know, that's their main go-to is, is waivers. And, and then also, like I said, kind of giving them more dangerous tools like chainsaws to professionals who are either licensed or otherwise covered in some capacity. So mitigating as much risk as possible from the get-go. Okay. I like the idea. Um, I don't know how others, others feel, but I, I guess I feel like I'd like you to come with a like a written proposal with some ideas about, um, you know, that you've talked to uh, highway department or you've talked to this person. This this is figured out, and this is what we need to do in terms of this is how people handled it for liability, and these are some suggestions that we can check out. Um, just so that it's a little more uh, planned out in terms of how we might be able to proceed. Um, and maybe even seeing if you can gather up some interest in town of some other people who'd be willing to help out with it. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy to do all those things. I just didn't want to send out an email or put on the list of this idea without checking with you folks first because that felt um, backwards and disrespectful to the community to do that. I think, yeah, in terms of talking about it is in terms of the planning phase, an idea. Right. Phase, yeah. Thank you, Gillian. Yeah, I think it's a great idea, too. And um, I don't know if you have a clear idea of when National Grid is going to start cutting, but I guess that is the, the looming sort of time. I think frame. when I give them permission, relatively, but then we're oh. kind of... <laughs> but so you have control. Is, Yes and no, because their town is liable if they, they're like, we have a tree that we want to remove and I don't give them the go ahead per se and it falls or something, you know, they, they, their line gets destroyed. I don't really know. I don't think there's any ramifications per se, but I, I don't want to, you know, for the town to lose electricity either. So um, I think there's there's a balance to it all. So I will I will check in with the foresters there and see if there's anything eminent on their list that they're like worried about. And you know, if it's a few trees end up just going to the side of the road for now, that's it's not huge, um, especially um, in consideration for the list that we have that we're working with. Um, and yeah, and I can also just get on it and tomorrow I can talk with the highway department and with, I guess, is it Ray? Is, is he in charge of the, the rats? Right, it's Ray at the rats, yep. Okay, and and that that space below the dump that I think you know what I'm talking about where the wood chips are right now, that's owned by the dump or that's that's in control of. That's part of the dump. Yeah. Okay. Are there and any other places? 
Oops, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, just would you need a power source? That's the only other um, nope. thought I had. No, nope. because nope. with all the all gasoline runs, gasoline. Be, you know, okay. a wood splitter or, or, you know, chainsaws and stuff, that, that would all be, that would all be gas powered. Okay. okay, very good. Well, thanks for the idea, Cliff, and thanks for coming. And uh, we, it looks like we all support it and in principle. And so take it away. Sounds good. Oh, and one last question. I'm not sure if it's with with you folks. I need to check in with this. Um, the cost for removing the trees that I, I did an assessment of um, is almost within budget if we're not paying uh, prevailing wages, but I, I'm pretty darn sure that that is required by our town. And so it's um, almost double what I have in my budget to take care of the trees that um, Dave Hawkins and I assessed that need to be removed. Um, and so I'm not sure how to apply for more funds or what that would look well, like to work with budget. Did, if, you, if you did need more funds, you'd need to go to the finance committee. Yes, sir. The, the town finance committee. But um, we do not need to pay prevailing wage if it's a sole proprietorship that's doing the work. Okay. So if you found one individual that was willing to do that work, I do not think we need to pay prevailing wage. So, uh, so it, did, would that qualify if it's a business? So there would be multiple employees under that umbrella, or is it? No, it's going to be a sole, a sole proprietorship. In other words, one nope. person acting as a business. Okay, that that will not work because he's got two or three people on his team. Because one person has to run the lift, and the so okay. So yeah. I guess we will have to do prevailing wages then. Yeah, but and I think the other. Um idea would be to prioritize the trees and spread it out over several years. Yeah, no, of course, that, that would be yeah. what we would have to do. I just wasn't sure if there was <laughs> extra money in, in the budget of sorts, because I, yeah. I, I was I believe we had thought that the assessment for the tree uh, removal and the, or the, the assessment for uh, ha tree hazards um, was greater than what we actually paid. And so I wasn't sure if that money could be allocated towards the actual removal of trees, but it is totally fine if it can't be. Okay. All right, well, I will work that into our, our budget and I'll make it work. And uh, well, thank you everyone for your time. And I hope you all have a great night and uh, thank you for loving our town so wonderfully. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Cliff. Yeah. Thanks for coming and the great ideas. Uh, my pleasure. All right, enjoy your night. Take care. Okay, Nancy, are we down to consulting town council on the land donation? Well, I think we're going to move back up to the uh, DLTA forms because I see that uh, Dan Leahy is here. Um, so these are the local technical assistance request forms that FERCOG sends us every year to go through and, and check off those things in which we're interested and then to prioritize our top three choices. And I think the Open Space Committee um, had a proposal for at least um, one of those items. Okay, well, go ahead, Dan. I, uh, thanks, thanks for um, uh, listening to our request. Did you, did you get the correspondence from us? Yes. Okay. So um, really, I guess we, we laid everything out in that one page letter. Uh, the, the funds that we have now uh, in hand are close to 14,000 and change. Um, we met with uh, the FERCOG uh, natural resource planner, Kimberly, Kimberly um, uh, Noack McFay and you know, we talked about how we could get to the $20,000 for a complete open space plan budget. Uh, and she shared with us a scope of work from Conway. And she uh, basically said that if you could get your select board to support the open space plan as the number one priority in the DLTA request this year, you would probably get that funding. And that's how we could get the, the, the plan completed. So that's what we're asking the select board is to support 
the open space committee's request uh, to be ranked number one priority for DLTA. Um, uh, and, you know, we, we've got some enthusiastic um, members at the moment. Uh, I think what we, in, in reading um, back on the prior minutes um, and annual reports from the, the, the past three or four years, I think one of the, um, there's been some changes in the committee membership, but I think also um, you saw a commitment that the open space committee members wanted to do the work themselves. But I think that those were good intentions, but to be to have no support system in place like the FERCOG, um, it resulted in uh, basically any planning efforts languishing. So here we are now, um, we're, 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 we're able to leverage some um, donation from Bear Mountain Preservation Association, the 8,000 appropriation from town meeting, and then a DLTA request will be on our way to uh, updating the open space plan. So happy to answer any questions around that. Uh, it sounds good to me, Dan. And I, I certainly be in favor of uh, prioritizing it as number one on that request. What do the other board members think? I think that's probably a good idea. I would just had a question for Nancy. Um, ha we haven't, have you even sent out a, a, that notice to boards yet to sort of see what other requests there might be? I, I did, um, I got one response from Joe Cuneo and he asked that we just answer, at least answer yes to the um, vaccination planning delivery and review so that they would be able to keep that going. And then Nan Riebschlager sent something from the planning board or I don't know if it was just from her, Lori, I don't know. And I can't seem to put my hand on it, of course, now that I'm looking for it. Um, I don't think it was a specific request. It was more of a, a generalized thing, but I can check back with her on that. Um, and sorry, and do you remember from last year? I feel like we might have put open space plan last year as one of our things, but maybe not at the top. Did we get anything last year? Did we get in a culvert study or something? I can't remember. Not, not that I can recall. Okay. I think the culvert assessment is something that we're interested in, though. We've talked about that before. That's also something we might be able to do um, with the, the MVP grant project. Um, I don't know how soon that'll happen, but it doesn't sound like Phil is uh, putting, you know, requesting that again at this point. So. I think that this open space plan is a good idea. And Gilliam? I agree. The only question I had um, is the priorities are regional sharing of services to achieve or enhance efficiency. Um, have we discussed whether this is something possible with the police agreement or is that not the right kind of thing that this money funds? Um, I think with the police agreement for number one, we're going to start uh, by looking at the amount of money Leverett has available in their grant. Okay. And uh, it's even possible that we may be able to, to get some consulting done just with the money they have left in their grant. Okay. Yeah, I don't see why not to prioritize. Um, sounds like it would be great to get that plan done. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, I think you've got a unanimous vote there, Dan. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, considering our request and supporting it this evening. And um, uh, I just want to say to Nancy that um, um, I'll be around in the morning if she has any questions, because I just I know that uh, the due date for this response is Friday to the FERCOG. So, oh. um, but I, um, I think um, the only information I looked at the um, kind of that's the, the sheet that needs to be filled out um, from the, the municipality and it, the information that um, 
you needed, uh, if you did support the open space was a contact person. So Nancy has m my name, my email and my phone number. So um, I, I think that should, should take care of it, but I'll be around in the morning, Nancy, if anything comes up. And I just wanna okay. also let the board know that Carol Roselle from the open space committee is on and um, also here um, in support of uh, the open space plan and our activities there. So we're, we're excited about it. Welcome, Carol, good to see you. Thanks Thank for coming you. and thanks for supporting this. It sounds good. Thanks everybody. I'm still, still new um, to the committee, but I just wanted to come on and, uh, and support the request. So thanks for having good. me. Good, thank you. So glad you joined the committee. <laughs> yeah, she's great. She's Doing a great, great addition. We're excited. Yeah, thanks for doing it. And thank you, Dan, for all your work on it. My pleasure, thank you. Okay, well, have a good evening and good luck with the rest of your agenda. Thank you, have a good yeah, night. And, and if any matters come up around the open space, we'll be doing plenty of public outreach, but if any questions ever come up around open space committee or open space issues, um, feel free to reach out to us. Good. We will. Great. Thank Good you. Evening, everybody. Good night, Carol. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay, so um, getting back to the form, it looks as though we can go through these item by item and just indicate if the town is interested and then go back and pick our, our second and third choices. Um, but I think, you know, just because it doesn't make our top three, it doesn't mean it won't be considered. Um, some of these we've done in years past. Um, others um, don't affect us. There's a Deerfield River Outdoor Recreation Study, particular one. But, um, I, I don't know if, if you want me to just read off the item and you can indicate yes or no or maybe. Sure. Or <laughs> okay, so the first one is Community Food Assessment, which I believe we have done in the past before with FERCOG. Few years back. Maybe skip that one for now. Okay. Next one was culvert assessments. Are, are, I think we're still interested in that. Yeah, let's put that in. Okay. The other one was managing flood risks. I'm not sure that we have much of a flood risk here at, at the top of the hill in Wendell. Well, we're down in the bottom of the valley and <laughs> we have been flooded. But okay. I, I don't think that's necessarily appropriate for a study. Uh, were there any other options? Um, or is that this it? Is in, this was having to do with the Deerfield River watershed. So I don't think this yeah, one right. was ours. Okay. Uh, the next one was the pollinator habitat corridor, which I believe we have um, also used their funding for. Yeah. Uh, regional water supply study about drinking water supplies. Um. Uh, that one makes me think of, you know, I, we keep hearing of more people who are running out of water in the summer, their wells are running dry. And I don't know if that's mm -hmm. something that would get covered under this or not um, in terms of thinking about whether there would be a need somewhere down the line for a more, um, I don't know if it's regional or like a public water supply might be a different. Okay, so the, um, the full thing says to assess the short and long term capacity of community water supplies in the region, identify implementation strategies to sustain and protect drinking water supplies and make them more resilient to climate change events, including droughts and flooding. Hmm. So in the region. Well, you know, uh, we do have a public water supply in town and it's the one that feeds the library and the town office building and all the town buildings. And it's a, it's a well that, that we developed when we were building the buildings. It's um, down off Cooley Hill Road on a piece of town owned land. It's about two and a half acres, I think, or maybe a little more. So it meets barely the requirements of the DEP. And uh, it, it's a it's not a big flowing well. It only flows at two gallons a minute or so, um, but it's it's never run dry and it's always provided really good water for those buildings. Mm -hmm. But it might be worth taking a look at it. 
studying that and seeing you know, seeing how uh, long lasting it might be and if there's an alternative to it. And the well at the school is New Salem? Is that New Salem? That's New Salem. Yeah. Right. It might be a fiscal impact on us, but it's controlled by New Salem. But it is part of our region also. Yeah. Is this something we can just say we're interested in, but yeah. not necessarily yeah. high, high yeah. priority? <laughs> yeah. Sure. Okay, so the next group is for housing and economic development, starting with Brownfields redevelopment support. I'm not sure that we have any Brownfield sites in town. No. Or any that are so. important enough to redevelop. Um, and then community economic development projects, and they want you to specify um, conducting survey to understand what residents, businesses, and visitors want for economic activity in their downtown or community, mm. conduct a parcel level analysis of village center or downtown uses and businesses, develop a mixed use economic development or housing action plan for a village center, provide technical assistance to create new or expand industrial parkland, update industrial park master plan. Those all sound for bigger towns to me. Bigger towns. Yeah. yeah. Uh, creative placemaking to develop and implement a pop-up park or public art project, including how to create and implement a project that fosters economic and Main Street activity. Maybe bigger town, I don't know. Yeah. Um, housing planning and implementation. Again, they want you to specify to create a housing production plan, five-year plan that identifies the housing needs of a community. Conduct a housing needs assessment and or housing needs survey. Implement local housing initiatives, such as drafting zoning changes, setting up CPA funded housing programs, establishing a municipal affordable housing trust or identifying potential sites for affordable housing. Or implement one or more mass housing choice initiative best practices. I would mark that as something that we're interested in, in my opinion. Um, sure. Okay, which one of the specific ones they wanted you to pick one of them? Conduct a housing needs assessment or housing needs survey. Okay, very good. How about, does anyone else want to weigh in that, on that? That sounds good. I think it's good. Okay, and the next one, I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago, we signed on to become an, an opportunity zone, um, mostly at the request of I believe it was Irving, they needed a couple of towns. So this is to assist with project or parcel identification to develop zoning and permitting recommendations in federally designated opportunity zones. In, and then they list all the towns of which Wendell is one. Um, I, I don't think that this was ever a thing in Wendell. Um, we just agreed to sign on to help some other towns. But if anybody is interested, we can put that one down. Pass on that. Yeah, I think we can pass. Okay, and then a small town housing working group to convene municipal housing stakeholders to work on housing issues and challenges in smaller towns to develop shared solutions to address housing needs and barriers. I feel like that fits with the survey. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that one could be Check. more so since it's targeting small towns. Right? Yeah, that might be better. Okay, um, and then as part of this, and I can reach out to you tomorrow or if you think of anybody, but they're looking for information for individuals wishing to be added to the email list for the, this particular working group. Okay. So at this point, I think I'll probably just put my name down and then um, we can send the information out to other people as needed. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The next group is municipal capacity building. Uh, the first one is to continue local official continuing education workshops. Um, I know we've attended those in the past. I don't know if anyone is still interested. Mm, I, could I, that. I always, well, I can't, haven't noticed any announcements lately, but I think I've attended a few <laughs> or try to. Okay. You can put that down. Beginning. Yeah. Okay, foster municipal engagement and involvement, considering how towns can increase citizen engagement and prepare for retirements of long-term public servants in key municipal positions. Like you. 
<laughs> through the development of a citizens' academy, succession planning, and participation in career fairs and expos. <sighs> like that one? <laughs> Pass on that one, probably. It doesn't. It'd be nice to have support in terms of how to work around replacing. I mean, we've gone through police. I mean, fire chief, police. Nancy. Well, we can <laughs> we we can put it down, but not make it a priority at this point. Yeah. Okay. Um, sure. The next one is rural policy plan implementation, allowing for staff to dedicate time and resources to implement the most important recommendations to Franklin County. Um, that rural policy plan was something that I know Linda Dunlavey was working on, and I'm not sure I've seen it in its entirety. I, I mean, if it helps in terms of advocating for our rural communities, I would just check the box. Okay. So the next one is the one Joe Cuneo asked to say yes to the vaccination planning, delivery, and review. Yes. He uh, thinks okay. that's important to keep the funding flowing. Information technology services sharing, um, design a regional shared IT service program, develop IT resiliency, recovering, and contingency plans, or other, please specify. It sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> Getting support for IT would be helpful. <laughs> okay, the next one is other municipal services sharing. Um, explore feasibility or continue to work to establish shared services. And they want you to specify if you're interested in Department of Public Works, facilities management of municipal buildings and grounds, human resource management, library programming, municipal financial services, or a shared town risk manager, OSHA compliance officer. I know that that last one I think is interesting to me. Um, we've mm -hmm. been getting away from it because nobody's had time with COVID, but we really need to get back to our OSHA compliance and training. Okay, yeah, let's put it down. Yep. Okay, um, collective purchasing. If you have any particular items you wanna go out to collectively purchase. I think that they do a pretty good job of that right now um, yep. through the FERCOG. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, public health sharing, sharing local health agent services. I didn't hear anything from the Board of Health, so I'm guessing they didn't necessarily have an interest. Um, do they already do, sharing. Do they do Excuse that me? kind of informally now? Like I know New well, Salem and get together a lot. Yeah, we're, um, we're a member of, um, and I can't remember the region, Wachusett Regional Health Service or something, but I think that's already set up uh, in the state in different regions. Um, okay, shared senior services or senior centers or senior housing. Um, water and sewer, uh, work on anaerobic digesters, sewage treatment. I, I don't think we have any of these things, so. No. Nope. Yeah. Nancy, next, can I just, the next one is, Nancy, can sorry. we just go back up? It says public safety sharing, explore feasibility or continue work to establish a new shared services. Oh, okay. So ambulance services, which we already share, um, um, should fire we services. Should we check? Police. Police? Um, we can, but you know, these things they're collecting money and I'm not sure that we have time to wait for them. I mean, they're collecting ideas to, to give us money. Okay. And we need to have it in place probably within the next, what, five months, our contract okay. with Robert? I see. I wasn't exactly sure how that worked. I didn't know if it was just prioritizing things for them to work on that we would be interested in. This is to prioritize the funding that they get, um, and they offer technical assistance to towns on these things. Okay. Okay. They've helped us with the police and fire in the past, and that's mm -hmm. how we got, I think, the original fire chief thing going. Okay. Okay, so uh, transportation, ensure safe infrastructure through improved visibility, assess intersections for visibility obstructions like overgrown vegetation, assess sign reflectivity and pavement markings throughout the town, and provide bylaw templates for abutter maintenance such as tree and bush trimming. I think the highway has to be willing to control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you probably don't need that. Okay, um, EV charging station implementation assistance. 
Lori, is that anything the Energy Committee wants assistance? I think that uh, we probably don't need that at this point. <laughs> okay. Uh, older driver mobility and safety campaign to coordinate with the Regional Transit Authority and Local Council on Aging to assess available transportation services beyond driving for seniors, assess signs and visibility at intersections, and produce outreach materials for senior drivers. I mean, nope. what's tricky about that? It's like, what alternatives are there in Wendell? Not much. Not much. Yeah. Okay, the next one is zoning policies and plans. And the first one is age and dementia friendly community planning, um, including ah. application to the AARP network. You can check that out. Okay. Um, the next one is recreational marijuana assistance. I think we've already gotten our bylaws in place for that. Yep. Um, wellhead protection plan to protect public drinking water supplies. Yeah, sure. Check it off. Okay. And then um, zoning bylaws or city ordinance development. Please specify. And wow, there's a whole list of things here. Um, affordable housing. Uh, clean I was energy. Just say. <laughs> Go ahead, Nancy. Uh, climate resilient stormwater management developing a master plan for housing or economic development, land conservation that protects natural resources, large scale commercial or industrial development, mixed use districts, development standards for tree retention, um, sorry, uh, short term residential rentals such as Airbnbs, update existing floodplain bylaws, uh, update subdivision rules and regulations. Have you heard anything from the planning board? Is any of these on their radar, Lori? No, I was just wondering if it would jar your memory about what Nan, did Nan send something yeah. to all of us or just to you? I think she sent something just to me, but I cannot yeah. find it. Let me reach out to her tomorrow. And if it was any of those, I can certainly check it off with her name. Okay. okay and that's the end of it. So now we need to, we have number one as the uh, open space plan update. So let me just give you a quick update on the other things we talked about. Um, culvert assessment, regional water supply study, um, small town housing working group, official continuing education workshops, foster municipal engagement and involvement, rural policy plan implementation, vaccination planning, IT services, uh, OSHA compliance officer, age and dementia friendly community planning and wellhead protection. I have my- I would vote for um, the culvert uh, as being one since we are really trying to pursue that. I was, gonna, do you think we need to have uh, the COVID one as a priority or do you think that's just gonna be there regardless? Um, you mean the uh, vaccination? Well, yeah. Joe did request that, so maybe that's important. Yeah, he just said to answer yes on COVID uh, response to continue aid with vaccine. Um, I don't know that it has to be one of the top three, okay. but I can check with him on that. Did you want the OSHA one to be up there, Nancy? No, I don't, you know, if, I'm just thinking maybe that age and dementia friendly community, maybe because we just talked about that. Okay. Yeah, I think that if a lot of towns say yes on it, even if it's not one of their top three, um, you know, they're, they're still going to be working on it. Right. That sounds good to me. Okay, then we'll do that. And if Joe says that we do have to have that vaccine as one of our top three, then I'll put it in in the third place. Good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's that. Um, so the next one, uh, I was asked by Ray DiDonato if we could consult with town council about how to accept the donation of land, specifically the easement for the McAvoy Pond Dam. He did send me some information and I, I believe it's gonna require a town meeting vote to accept this. 
but um, I, I don't like to spend town council money without approval of the board. Uh, I would approve that. And I guess Lori's probably been disqualifying herself. So sure. it's I'll up second. to you, Gillian. Okay. Very good. Okay, um, the next one is we received a citizen um, who was concerned that some of members of the police department in Leverett are refusing the COVID-19 vaccine and they expressed their concern about that. And so Dan asked me to put this on the agenda to talk about it. Right, and, and I did check back with Julie on this and one of the officers has agreed to take the vaccine. The other one is still thinking about it, uh, but that officer uh, is actually a new hire and is on probation. So I'm getting the feeling uh, that if that person does not want the vaccine, that Scott might just decide that, that he doesn't want that officer, which is sad um, because I think they liked the officer um, and the officer moved from far away, I think. Um, but anyway, that's that's their business, except for the fact that we did get a letter from a Wendell citizen who's very concerned about first responders not being vaccinated and asked us to encourage uh, or stronger language uh, the person to get vaccinated. And my thought on it is, and we each can have our own thoughts on it, but um, my thought on it is that I do not feel qualified to encourage somebody or discourage somebody from getting the vaccine. And I feel that it is largely a question of personal conscience and uh, there may be valid reasons for not getting it. Whether or not first responders should need to get it is a question I don't think we need to decide. I hope not. Um, but uh, the Leverett Select Board did write a letter to the officers saying that it was very important that they be vaccinated. And uh, we can certainly do that. I don't believe I would sign that letter because like I said, I don't consider myself qualified to suggest to anyone whether or not they should be getting it. I do have a number of constituents who are, who are extremely doubtful about it and I think have legitimate reasons in their own minds for being concerned. So. That's my feeling about it, but uh, let's hear what you folks think. My concern is, is that yes, like I support encouraging people to get it, but it does end up being their decision. Um, we don't know what somebody's health situation is and whether they have reasons why um, they can't get the vaccination. Um, or it's an increased risk for them to receive the vaccination. Right. Um, so I think it is really challenging to require somebody to get it. And if they don't, they lose their job when it could be something that they don't, I don't feel like they have their, they don't have to disclose their medical um, situation and it may not be that or not. It might be a personal decision. That they just don't want to get it. But it is really tricky. It's. Um, yeah. I think if roles were reversed, sometimes we would question whether, uh, if we were being required to do something. I mean, yeah. I'll disclose personally. I'm getting the vaccine. I support that. But I can get it, and that's a decision I make for myself. Um, right. Lori. Well, I would say. Um... I agree with what the New Salem board did, I think. And I and so I think it's definitely not um, out of the question to highly encourage every first responder Lori, do to you get mean the vaccine. Do you sorry, mean yes, Leverett, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, yes, I think that it, I don't see any reason not to highly encourage it. I agree with Gillian that we really don't know people's medical reasons. And, you know, so, and I think it's, there is, we cannot require it. I, I mean, for certain reasons, I don't know about probationary officers 
if that means that they, he can he can you know let someone go without cause. So that, yeah, that's what it means. In that sense, I guess you know, and and I and I wouldn't say so. So my next thought is since we did get this letter from a Wendell resident. Um, having an officer who can't or won't get the vaccine could easily make it so that they can't respond to a situation where there's somebody who doesn't want to deal with the uh, first responder who hasn't been vaccinated. So that would make them less effective at their job. Um, so I guess that's my thinking. I, don't, I know it's, I don't know if Scott has a way of a better idea of why they're they're making this choice or might make this choice, and that can also help it, him in um, you know making his decisions. But um, yeah, I would be fine if we wanted to make a statement like the Leverett Select Board did. Okay, well uh, that's fine, and we can write a letter like that. I I wouldn't be signing it, but you you two can do that. I have no problem with it. I won't object. I won't vote no. But um, we could send out such a letter, and uh, if that letter goes out, it might be a good idea to copy the person who made the complaint. So is that something we need to? vote on here or can we just have Nancy write a letter and we can sign it? Uh, if anybody would like to vote, we can, but I don't think we need to, it's okay. up to you. Okay. And so, do you have a copy of this letter that I could use, um, Dan? Um, I do not have a copy of the letter. Um, I, can get, I can get you a copy of the letter. I'll okay. do that. that Dan, will you send it to all of us? I will, yeah. Thank you. Okay, um, I don't, does anybody have anything under old business that they wanted to discuss? Um, I would like to suggest that uh, 40 Gate Lane be taken off the list of old business for the mm -hmm. time being and let that sleeping dog lie for the moment. Fine, fine with me. And the town hall crawl space, Jim and I are working on it. Um, I guess Jim came to the conclusion that the best thing to do is to get four or five the little ozone generators because they can be spread out evenly uh, throughout the crawl space. And then they can be used to disinfect the offices as well one at a time if we decide we need that. So um, if we have a budget for that, which Jim's working on the numbers, uh, we'll go ahead if everybody approves and buy four or five of those things, and Jim and I will do the work of dosing the crawl space. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I, th I think we wanted to coordinate that with- um, Right. When we can do, yeah, you know, so maybe we can buy them now, but I don't think that we have the money to actually do the insulation at this point. I don't think what we have in the budget is going to be enough. Right. Um, so right. maybe we should use part of that money to purchase the machines, but not actually do the work yet. I think that's right, yeah. And that uh, we should remind the FinCom that that's an article we would like to put on the annual is to get the money to do that and the insulation. And we should put that out to bid or uh, send some notices around to get some figures on that before the town meeting. So we do have a good number. Okay. I can, um, we still haven't decided about the green communities. We're still getting a final quote on um, the win, win, window quilts at the town hall was what mm -hmm. we were going to um, move forward with if the price is right. Um, I'm wondering if it might be worthwhile checking with green communities about whether they would fund something that was a mold remediation in preparation for insulation. Good if, idea. We, if, if the window quilts either to fall through or if we still have extra money or if we wanted to consider that instead of the window quilts. So I can have Nan ask about that. Good, thanks, a good idea. Do you have any kind of a ball, 
<laughs> ballpark price you think the, it costs for the, the generators? Ultimate? Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's say uh, $600 total. Oh, that's not bad. I, I think Jim said 100 to 150 so you might make it 800 I guess. Okay. And anything else on the all business? I have one new business item, uh, sort of. Um, under speeding controls, it sounds like it will begin tomorrow. Yeah. Watch out. And we get a new Liam. driver on the road. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Liam. <laughs> Snowy roads. Yeah. <laughs> Officers. Uh, board vacancies, are we, how are we doing with that, Nancy? Do you know? Um, I think we still have a vacancy on the assessors. Um, I'm not sure about any of the others. Well, we got open space, Caro, and Caro's actually working to have Seal possibly join too. Mm -hmm. um, we're still looking for the Energy Committee. Jonathan was considering it, but he didn't, he decided not to. Um, yeah, I, I can't remember others now. Board of Health got filled. Oh, who did Board of Health? Shay Cooper. Oh, right. Oh, right. Okay. I didn't know that. Okay, well, on the uh, the new items, we, we now have a deed, which I think everybody's seen for the meeting house. Oh, right. Uh, finally. Um, and this is the end of a very long road. Um, so it's uh, very welcome for me. Um, but uh, if you had a chance to look at the deed uh, that we presumably would sign to turn the building over to them, did you folks agree that it looked okay? I did not get a chance to look at it. Oh, okay. I was bad at my preparation today. <laughs> That's okay. You know, it's, 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 sure essentially, it's fine. essentially boilerplate. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty simple. And it just says that we're turning the building over to them. And there probably isn't a whole lot of change in content from when we reviewed it before. The draft, right? Or agreement. Um, this is new. This is new. So it's not the... This is not the purchase and sale and it's not the land development agreement. Okay. Those have been signed. The land development agreement is permanent. And, yeah. and that, you know, when that gets signed by everybody, that becomes a permanent restriction on the building, basically. The yeah. purchase and sale agreement was an agreement to okay. produce the deed for that. Okay. And that's the, that's and the last that's step. On their plate. Mm -hmm. So we, we all just need to sign that, okay. hopefully which we can do tomorrow morning. But uh, can we just vote on that one? I move that sure. we accept this deed and uh, sign it over to the meeting house, folks. I second sure. it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. Great. Thank you. That's that's really going to make everybody happy, I think. Uh, it's a, definitely a win-win yes. situation. The meeting and house people are ecstatic. And they'll get a, there's been lots of activity there, I've noticed. Yep. Yep. They've got lots of big plans too, and uh, new people right. joining the board, and it looks pretty good. It's exciting. So uh, is, the deed is here ready to be signed, and we also need to re sign the land development agreement because the date had to change. Uh, the lawyer said it shouldn't be signed before the deed. So I have everything dated for tomorrow. It's all out on the desk. Okay. Great. Thank you, Nancy. That's, that's beautiful. That's great. And uh, I, 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 court is the only person that needs to sign. Additionally, from anybody outside of our meeting, I think, and right. I arranged with court uh, to show up at the town office tomorrow afternoon, Nancy. That's fine. Uh, he said between 2 and 2.30 or so. Yeah, I'll be here. He, he I do he, not have to notarize his signature because I did notarize Don Stone's, um, right. but court still needs to sign it. Yep, yep. And so, yeah, just be aware that the uh, we have to re-sign the LDA and then sign the deed. 
and they'll be on the table. And then when court comes into sign, uh, Nancy, you can give him copies of, uh, you can give him an original. I, I guess the, uh, we should probably have two deed copies and sign both of them and give him one okay. of those originals. Yeah, we have two originals on all of them, so we can do two okay. on the deeds as well. Okay, good, perfect. And somebody will write us a check. Uh, the check's already, already been did. delivered. Oh, great. Yep. Good. Yeah, we're rich. <laughs> what will we do with our $100? <laughs> <laughs> all right, change the tax rate. Put <laughs> it in the bank, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that's all for me. Okay. I don't have anything, I don't think. Okay, excellent. Good all work, right. everybody. It's 8.32. Um, we Did you want to make another um, schedule for tomorrow? Yeah, I'm flexible. I'll be there like around eight-ish or so. Lori, what's good for you? Um, what is happening tomorrow? He's driving around town. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I'll, you like, you, do you still like 10, Dan? I'll probably go later. Yeah, good. I'll probably go midday or something. Okay, good. Excellent. Lori, I just have to ask you, is that a, behind you, a mask? <laughs> it's a sculpture. It's a sculpture of a mask. <laughs> yes, it's metal. Ray bought it and he liked it. How becoming. Up this interesting a historical base, art piece like a chain on the base oh my uh -huh. god <laughs> well let, let's hope there's a day when we can look back on that yeah <laughs> josh did you have something i kept thinking your hand was raised i do you hear me yep yep okay um the few people on the garden committee want to cut trees along the east border of the community garden and maybe some on the north border along with Jeff Richardson and Anna Boysen, those two properties. Yeah. And it's town property. Um, usually if it's a small thing, we just leave it there. But if it's large enough, I'll take it home for cordwood or somebody will. Okay. It's okay. That do okay. you have to ask the tree warden? <laughs> um, well, it's not close to the road. Most oh, uh, so he's close just to the road didn't... are too big for me to cut. Yeah. I mean, but he does. Does he need to give uh, permission for any for things that are off the road? No, he's just along the road. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Night. Okay. Night, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. I'm waving at you like you can see me. I think I'm losing my mind. Oh. <laughs> I'll wave to you, Nancy, too. Bye, Nancy. Bye. Bye. See you later. <laughs>